I'm the first, huh? Okay. I like metaphors. Metaphors is what helps me go by in life. I even categorize them. And it's for one of these metaphors that I will talk to you about today. And that metaphor is called the Superman's phone booth. Let me start by explaining, because you are young people, you may not know. What is, who is Superman? He hasn't had a movie lately, so maybe a Superman is a, super, is a guy with superpowers, something like Batman, only he has this blue and red, and he has this weird thing that he has his underwear over his trousers. You know, that's really weird, but yeah, that's Superman anyway. And a phone booth is that thing that we had centuries ago when we didn't have mobile phones, and in order to make a phone call, we had to queue, enter there, put a coin, and call mom or somebody. So, Superman, what he did is, he was Clark Kent, by the way, and during his life, during his day, at some point, he was listening to the calling. Something bad was happening to the city, and he had to run there, but he couldn't go as Clark Kent, he had to go as Superman. So he would jump in to the first available phone booth, he would change, come out as Superman. Go in as Clark Kent, come out as Superman. What's really strange is that nobody ever found his clothes. But, you know, anyway, so this is what I call transformation. It's something in our lives where we go in as something and we come out as something else. This is transformation, this is a turning point. Story begins many, many years ago. Um, many of you might resonate. I used to be, in most, the biggest part of my life, the good kid, you know. I was existing, I wasn't annoying anybody. I was smiling, I was good, I was polite, I was clean, I was everything a parent could wish for. Everything was okay. And, most importantly, I was never saying no. Everything was a yes. All this resulted in building a character where I wasn't actually fighting for things. And you know, at the beginning, it was okay, because it wasn't too much you know, bad. It wasn't that bad. It was mom, dad, sir, madam. No, it could be. You know, no, it was. Now that I think about it with girls, because, you know, all this lack of courage, I, th I remember it would take me several months to decide to ask somebody out. And when I was asking them out, I would take them to a coffee place. And I think I was exhausting them that much for three or four hours for me to find the courage to say that I would like them to be, you know, I would like us to be a couple or something. Of course it wasn't working, and I didn't even, but I didn't even have the courage to ask, was it because they didn't like me or because I was trying to kill them in my own sweet way? <laughs> I never found out. Anyway, the real trouble began later, when I remember that there was this contest at school, and um, one of the, my favorite lesson, my favorite course was essay writing and I still write today. And uh, not being an A student myself, it was really important for me to get an award, to get something, you know? So there was this contest, <clears throat> we had to write an essay about something, and one day before the official announcement of the results, uh, my teacher told me that my essay was the best. So I was like really happy, eh? I, I wanted to go to my parents and say, listen guys, I did it. I did it, something like Rocky, you remember Rocky, the movie? You Adrian, I did it, you know, something like that. So, um, but I didn't, thank God. I was waiting for the official result. So next day, we, there we go to the classroom, and in front of everybody, me, I'm waiting to be glorified and everything, teacher announces that the one who yesterday was number two is number one today. This is exactly what was going on in my head. Silence. Because he was supposed to have evaluated the papers, our essays. Now the fact that his father, the kid's father was a benefactor of this school, at this school I assume had nothing to do with it, but you know what? I was so pissed off and I was so angry and I, you know, I wanted to scream, I wanted to start beating people up, you know, I was like really, really angry and at the same time, I was paralyzed. Out of fear. Out of all these things that I learned and I grew up with, paralyzed, zero. I took it in the face, I didn't do anything. Chickened out, co, co, co. Did nothing. 
that really hurt. That really hurt. Now, when you go through that, and you know, that becomes a second nature. And at some point you may lose hope. Thank God I was too young not to lose hope. So there I was in 1994, I was in England uh, studying for my MBA in Sunderland. And at some point I decided I want to study to have a next, to have another, a second uh, master's degree next year. So I wanted to go to study tourist marketing. Greek, tourism, tourist marketing, normal, no brainer. So best one, University of Staffordshire, Stockholm Trent. I write them a letter, by the way, then we didn't have emails and stuff, we were writing letters. I wrote them a letter, they replied to me, and they invited me to that open day with the dean of the university. I was again very happy, very, very happy. So, you know, I'm going there, I'm booking a ticket, my train ticket, it had to be economy, so it was late at night. I pack my stuff, I go to the train station, I'm really happy, I go into the wagon, somebody sitting on my seat. Normally I would ask him to, you know, to get up, but not possible. Uh, I realized that I was in the same wagon with uh, some 30 or 50 football fans of a team who were going to Manchester to watch a game. And with these guys you don't really mess around. So I took it again, don't say anything, pissed, but okay, no problem, good kid. And I go to, I spent four and a half hours, four and a half hours in the restaurant coach, standing, because there was no seat. But that was okay, I was 25, who cares, you know, everything is possible. So I reached Stockholm Trent. Has anybody of you been to Stockholm Trent? Good for you. The most depressing city in, in the UK, I think. So I go there, it's late at night, a good friend of mine is waiting for me, so I could spend the night at her place. I go there, and as she, the moment she opens the door, I realize how the North Pole feels like. I've never walked into a colder house in my life. That night, I slept with all my clothes on, I swear to God, only my shoes. I took, out all, I took off only my shoes. So pr practically I didn't sleep. But again, what did we say? 25, no problem. Wake up in the morning. I, I, yeah, I want to say that I got shaved, but you know, when you get shaved with a water that is one degree, <laughs> again, that's really tough. But anyway, I made it. I put on my suit. Yes, I had a suit with me and I went there. I, Walked into an auditorium like that, 50 people like me waiting, and while I was staring at nowhere, waiting for the dean to come, I was thinking, okay, I've had my share of bad times, I think nothing else is going to happen today, it's a new day. Surprise, surprise. There's always a good, you know, a thing that can go wrong. So instead of the dean, there's another guy coming in, telling us that the dean is very busy. Remember, I traveled all this time, so for so many hours, and the dean is busy and he will talk to us about the school. So the guy starts a general discussion about this and that, so no questions, no nothing. Again, you know, I feel the, I'm starting boiling and I'm getting really angry and everything, but I don't say anything. And guess what? Surprise, surprise, the dean comes in. And I'm like, okay, that's it. And he says two words, and he says, I'll see you and I'll see you, and he goes. You know, desperation is the word. I cannot, yeah, I cannot describe it any other way. So there I am, and I, I, would like to, I would like you to try to make you understand the awkwardness of the moment. I'm there, and again, I'm, you know, I'm pissed, and I want to shout, and I want to do something, and at the same time, I'm expecting any second for paralysis to kick in. And then the miracle happens. Somebody else takes over. It wasn't me for sure, but somebody in my body takes over. So for no reason, without me understanding why, I stand up and I start moving fast behind, you know, following the team. I'm like 10 meters behind him, I see the office he's getting into, I'm going in the office, he shuts his door, and I'm in front of his secretary. <clears throat> now I should say we are in front of his secretary because it's me and the other guy who I don't know him, but he lives inside me, you know, he, he does these things. So I'm there and the secretary tells me he cannot see you today. And this other guy replies to her, well, it's fine, my train leaves in five hours and it's very warm here and you have a nice couch, here I am. So I sat and, you know, I was there. And, you know, how, has it ever happened to you to observe yourself from above and look like, seriously now, is it you? And I was there waiting. So half an hour later, they got convinced that I'm not leaving. So the door opens, 
I still remember the dean's face. He shows up, you know, like with this parental, uh, fatherish smile, full of affection. And he tells me, he asks me, what can I do for you? And inside me, there is the guy who wants to beat him. And this other guy who wants to take it easy, you know, like, okay, man, take it easy. So I go in, we open a discussion and I explain to him that I'm here because I want to study in this university. I want to have this course. The result is that after 30 minutes or so of discussion, he offered me half scholarship unconditionally without having the grades to get that. Obviously, he appreciated my determination and my craziness or the other guy's craziness, but anyway, that was it. For me, that was one of my Superman's phone booths. His office was one of the phone booths. I got in as somebody, I got out as somebody else. So, what did I learn out of it? This experience told me, first of all, to act, to ask. When I want something, I ask. I just ask, and I don't personalize the rejection. You know, there are so many, there are more, many, more, many more people out there who want to give us what we need. For some strange reason, we all assume they are, they are not, or they don't want. But guess what? There are. I also learned that, you know, sometimes it is what it is. And we have to take life as it is. Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose, sometimes I smile, sometimes I cry, but I've made it my own decision, whatever that is, to have a good time and to learn something from it. I also learned that it's okay to, to have flaws. Nobody's perfect. Perfect is boring. And sometimes we're afraid to change because we feel like, you know, the people might, I will lose some friends. Lose these friends. Lose the friends who don't accept you as the one you are. And keep the ones who accept you as who you are. And last but not least, I learned that we all have this kind of fear. And that fear is that if we change, we will lose our values. And we will, you know, we will lose ourselves. What I can tell you is that if our values are solid, they're always with us. So don't be afraid of the change. I remember I cried that night on the way back. And I know why. Now I know why. And you know, this is part of the beauty of life. Because sometimes things happen to us. We think we know what happened. But guess, you know, later on in life, when we acquire more experiences, we get new eyes. And then we can really understand what happened that day. I cried because obviously I was trying to digest the change. I cried because my revolution, my little revolution worked. I cried because my inner self came out. And I'm sure that I also cried because my Superman inside told me that now then I have one more good story in my life's backup, backpack that it's my obligation to share with some people in the future. And I think it's, no, I don't think, it's the first time I'm sharing this story in public. And what I would like to tell you is go out there and dare to be who you want to be. Dare to find your Superman. Dare to find your Superman's phone booths. And I wish you that they are many because that means you're doing things in life, and dare to bring your rebel out. So, would you care to say, to tell me who is going to be the one who will pass his Superman story to somebody in the future? Who would that be? Hands. It's yours. Thank you very much. Thank you very much.